What's going on guys? Welcome back to DCS World and welcome back aboard the FA-18C Hornet by Eagle Dynamics. In this tutorial video, what I want to take a look at real quick are pretty much just the displays and instruments that you're going to be staring at for the majority of your time while you're flying this bird. Now, you've got a few displays uh, Basically front and center here we have our HUD, which is here. We have our two displays here, which are called Digital Display Indicators, or DDIs. And we have a third display down low here that is known as the AMPCD, Advanced Multipurpose Color Display. Now that's a mouthful. Uh, let's first zoom in and take a look at our head up display. Let's just pause my camera there so we see it front and center. The HUD of the Hornet is your primary flight instrument. This is where you will spend the most time looking for uh, just about any information you possibly could want about how the airplane is flying and things you might be doing at any given time. You'll have symbology on the HUD for uh, any different tasks you might be performing, whether you're just navigating around or you're lining up to drop a bomb or you've got a radar lock on someone and ready to fire a missile or you're trying to aim the gun, whatever the case might be, you're going to be using the HUD primarily to do most of that. So let's just take a look at what we have here. I'm in a basic nav mode right now, um, so the information displayed will represent that uh, from top to bottom. As you can see, I'm in a sort of a shallow orbit here. So you see we've got a heading tape along the top that's displaying our, our magnetic heading. And we're crossing 180 degrees right now. Moving down, we have a box here to the left. This is our current calibrated airspeed. And I'm currently doing 302 knots. On the right, we have our current barometric altitude. This can also be configured to display radar altitude below 5,000 feet with a switch uh, down below. Above that, since we're in a nav mode, we also see our current vertical speed, presently zero uh, because I am not climbing or descending. I'm just turning left to right here. In the center of the HUD, we see the pitch ladder. Now, uh, very, you know, standard pitch ladder uh, that you would see in just about any aircraft with a head-up display. Five degrees up is this hash here, and then down below, five degrees down, ten degrees, and it just keeps going on in increments of five as you pitch up or pitch down. Bear in mind that dashed lines represent a pitch below the horizon, and our horizon line is this staple here and solid lines indicate pitch above the horizon. In the very center of the HUD, we have our total velocity vector, or TVV, also commonly known as just the path vector. This tells us where our airplane is going right this second, so it tells us where we're pointed for the most part. Along the left side here, we have a wealth of information. We have our current angle of attack, denoted by the Greek letter alpha. By this symbol here, our current alpha is 3.8 degrees, and it is angle of attack in degrees and not units, so that's pretty easy to understand. Below that, we have the letter M. This stands for Mach. And currently we're going Mach 0.63. Mach, as you know, is a factor of the speed of sound. And this is a supersonic jet, so knowing our Mach number is important. Below that, we have our current G-meter. Uh, that is to say how many Gs we're pulling in a turn or a pull. Currently, we're in level flight and just turning gently, so we are pulling 1.0 Gs. Uh, below that, it's not indicated right now, but you'll also see just below this, right about where my cursor is, you might see a number... Uh, you know, like 4.5, 4.9, 7.0, uh, somewhere along those lines. That indicates the maximum amount of G loading you've actually pulled uh, since you've reset the FCS. 
Um, more on resetting the FCS in a later video. But uh, just know that you can see your max G that you've pulled here. Okay, below that we have a clock. Uh, I believe it displays Zulu time or UTC time by default. Below this, we have a semicircular indicator here. This is our bank indicator. So you have zero degrees of bank in the middle here. You have five degrees, or I'm sorry, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, and 30 degrees. And I believe this is two and a half degrees of bank. I'm not 100% sure about that. I'll put a note on the video uh, with a correction if I am not correct there. And on the right side, we have uh, ATC. This does not stand for air traffic control. This stands for automatic throttle control, which this just indicates that I have my auto throttles enabled. And uh, the HUD can display some more information depending on what mode we're in. So if you're in an air-to-air -air mode or an air-to-ground mode, it will have other symbology, which I will point out when we start to employ some of the different uh, weapons and functions that may change the symbology on the HUD. Let's zoom out here and look down. So now we are looking at our front dash. We have some instruments here. As I mentioned before, we have our digital display indicators. That's these guys here on the left and the right. And uh, they are basically multifunction displays, uh, as you might find in most modern aircraft. Um, just do be careful. You will piss off Matt Wagner if you call them MFDs. They are called DDIs, Digital Display Indicators. And we can display a wealth of information on them. So to just briefly touch on some of the things we can display, uh, we have our select buttons around the outside. So these are how we select the different pages. There's a, a couple of main pages that we have here. So this center button down here, labeled TAC, this indicates that we are on the tactical main page. And if we click this again, we're on the support main page, so it displays some different options that we have here. And I'm not going to go in all of them, but if we just look at the TAC page for just a moment, we can display things like our stores, so what weapons we have loaded. Click this center button to go back to the TAC page. We can bring up our radar screen. And so on and so forth. We also have a neat function here called the HUD repeater, so... We were looking at the HUD just a moment ago. This is an exact copy of what we were looking at on the HUD. That's pretty cool. SA page, EW page, etc. And we can display the same things. Well, technically we can display the same things on all of our screens, but you will, you know, interchange screens upon these two uh, DDIs here. Take a look at the support options real quick. Um, we have our HSI, Horizontal Situation Indicator, which uh, you should be familiar with if you've flown any airplane ever. We have our uh, digital ADI, so basically a digital attitude indicator. few other things. A checklist page, which is kind of neat. The F-Pass page, which I'll uh, likely do an entire video on because it's really cool what it can do. And a number of other functions as well. Now, we can display all of that information on any of our three displays up front here, but we can display certain information, and I'm just going to zoom in on it more directly so we can see on the lower screen. As I mentioned, this is technically a different screen known as the AMPCD, or Advanced Multipurpose Color Display, and it has um, full color functions. So, for example, if we go to the support page and bring up our HSI, we not only get the HSI symbology, we also get a moving map, which we can't get on the upper screens. So. One thing to just keep in mind is that the lower screen is full color and has moving map functionality, whereas the upper screens are only three color, essentially monochrome for most intents and purposes, and cannot display 
the moving map. And of course up front, uh, not really an instrument, but uh, we will be using it quite a bit. We have the up front controller with a number keypad and some soft buttons here that can display different bits of information. It's currently displaying my autopilot information. Uh, I will do full videos that detail what each of these buttons do, as well as we have our radios. Radio 1 is right here, and Radio 2, COM 2 is right here. Uh, the Hornet is nice in that it has literally two of the exact same radio, so both radios can tune just about any frequency. Uh, more on that in a later video. For right now, that's really all I have to say about the cockpit instrumentation that we will be staring at for the most part. Uh, I will go into more detail in future videos, but for now, um, get familiar with it, and uh, I'll see you guys for the next video. Take care.